So a story from Rajasthan, the land of kings, the Rajasthan. Because once there was a young girl, and the young girl didn't have much money. In fact, she had to beg for whatever food she could eat. But she had one thing. She had one thing, a beautiful dancing monkey. And this monkey, well, her name was Laku. Laku Bandri, Laku the monkey. And so the monkey would dance in the town. And she would dance and she would do a moves from side to side. And people would put a few coins in, in the hat and that's how they would live. Now one day the king, the king of that particular part of Rajasthan, he was going to have a birthday party. So he set out a decree, an invitation, an open invitation for all the entertainers of Rajasthan to come. Show what they could do. And those that pleased him, well, they would be able to perform at his birthday party and they would get rewarded. And the girl said, Laku, Laku. Look, we can go. We can go. You can dance. And if you impress the king, well, our lives can change. What do you think? Is that a good idea? And Luku says, huh? That's a great idea. So the day finally came. Well, you can imagine the road leading to the palace gates. Well, every chancer, every romancer, every dancer, every singer, every instrumentalist, well, they were all gathered. And finally, the young girl in Lakubandri, well, they made their way to the guards. And there were the two guards. And the one main guard, well, he had a round belly like a barrel. He had a moustache that seemed to go on for miles. And he looked at the girl and he said, So, uh, are you a singer? No, 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 I'm not. Uh, are you a musician? No, 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 no. Acrobat? No. Well, what is it that you do? I have this dancing monkey. <laughs> I'll put you down as other then. Uh, and what is the name of this dancing monkey? Laku. Well, in that case, he said, Good luck, <laughs> and he nudged his friend. You see what I did there? Good luck, <laughs> and he opened the gates and he let them through. Well, the girl and the monkey they made their way through the palace grounds, and my goodness me, they were magnificent. Because over there were the wild peacocks, and the other side the orchards, and those fruits were smelling luscious. And they could hear, they could hear the animals in the menagerie. Oh my goodness me, as they went through this archway. And the stone archway was guarded by two stone elephants and their trunks were almost touching. As they made their way through there, they were led into the main banqueting hall. And everywhere was a hubbub of activity. Everywhere people were limbering up and everywhere people were tuning their instruments. There were the tabla players. And the tabla players were tightening the skins on their drums. And the sitar players were tightening the strings and tuning their instruments. And the acrobats were all limbering up and stretching. The fire eaters were there getting the right consistency with their flame. And each, one by one, were allowed to approach the king and demonstrate. Demonstrate their skills. And some of those people got a shava shava. And some of those people got a bale bale. And some of those people got a no good. But we won't talk too much about them. Finally, it was Lakku Bandri's turn. And Lakku Bandri, well, she approached and there she was face to face with the king. And the king was there with his huge moustache bubbling away at his hookah. And the music started and it took her a little while, but after a while, well, she started moving her hips this way. She started moving her hips that way. She started curling her wrist this way and curling the other wrist that way. And her head was bobbing from side to side. My goodness, man, everyone applauded with a shava, shava, bale, bale, baba, kamal hogi. She's amazing. She's incredible. You have to have her at your birthday party, your majesty. And that's exactly what happened. Lakubandri was allowed to stay in the palace and her mistress, well, the young girl made her way back to the slum area. And you know what? The party was a success, a resounding success. And even then, the king didn't want to let the monkey go because she was so incredible. So it was agreed that she would stay in the palace. And whenever visitors came, whenever dignitaries came, well, she would entertain them with her leaping, her dancing, her graceful moves. And she was incredible. Everybody fell in love with everybody, adored her. And life was fantastic, well, for about two weeks. Because one day the king appeared and there was Lakubandri and she had her head buried in her hands and he says, Lakubandri, what's the matter? Why, why are you looking so sad? Are you not happy here? Well, said the monkey, it's like this, your majesty. I was thinking, I was thinking, uh, you know, I, I have these beautiful clothes and I have all these nice ornaments. And well, my mistress, she has nothing. She still walks around in rags. That's not fair, is it? Like, yeah, but, uh, of course it's not fair. And he called his tailor and he, he says, Taylor, he says, go to such and such place. He says, take as many samples and, and, and give, give this monkey's mistress all the clothes and all the adornments and all the accessories that she wants. Is that okay, Lekubandi, Lekubandi? Ah, thank you, your majesty. And that's what happened. The tailor went and oh, her mistress was given a thousand different outfits and the finest silks and satins. 
And Lakobandri continued with her dancing and her entertaining and impressing all the dignitaries and the VIPs that came. And life was sweet, well, for about two weeks. Because there he found her again. He said, Lakobandri, you're looking upset again. What's the matter? I've given your mistress clothes and you're still not happy. She says, well, I was thinking. She said, I eat. I eat off these beautiful gold platters and I drink from these gold jugs. And my mistress, well, she still has to beg for scraps. That's not right, is it? Like, yeah, but eh, of course it's not right. And he called his cook. And he says, cook, he says, go. He says, take supplies. He says, uh, enough rice, enough grain. He says, enough vegetables and spices to last 10 years. Is that fine? Oh, that's fine. Thank you, Your Majesty. And off they went. And she carried on her dancing. She carried on her moves. She carried on her entertaining. Life was fantastic, you know what, for about two weeks. Because there he saw her again. He said, look, Kobandri, he says, I've given your mistress clothes and food. And still, you're not happy? She said, well, it's like this, Your Majesty. I, I, I was just thinking, she says, that uh, everything I need, I click my fingers and it's brought to me. And my mistress, well, poor woman, you know, she doesn't really have a lot. She doesn't have any disposable income whatsoever. That's not right, is it? Like, yeah, but then he called the treasurer and he says, treasurer, take what? Two? Even more? Look, three? Take three chests full of gold coins and give them to the mistress. And that's what happened. And Lakubandi, she was happy again. She was dancing again. She was shimmy, shimmy, shimming. She was shimmy, shimmy, shimming this way. Shimmy, shimmy, shimming that way for about two weeks. Because then he saw her again. And now she was despondent again. He says, Lakubandi, what's wrong? I've sent her food. I've sent her clothes. I've sent her money. What else? She says, well, I was thinking I live in these beautiful, luxurious, monumentally gorgeous surroundings. But my mistress, she doesn't even have a house of her own. That's not right, is it? Like, yeah, but, eh? And he called his architect. He called his master tradesman. He says, go, make her a two-story. No, three? More Lakubandri? Four, five, seven? Yes. Make her a seven-story mansion. And that's exactly what happened. They made the most beautiful seven-story mansion, the biggest house in the whole area. And life was fantastic as she carried on shimmying and Laku was entertaining once again, doing what she did. And life was good for about two weeks because then, you know, it's like when you have a job that you don't necessarily want and your heart's not really in it. Well, that's what happened because Lucky Bondi would turn up and VIP guests would be there and she'd be doing a half-hearted dance sort of this way and that way. And one day, hi, man, I'm under, look, though, my shoulder's a bit stiff. Uh, hi, many bakia, look, yeah, my sides are hurting. Oh, my knees are a bit wonky. And the king was getting more and more agitated. And one day he just said, get out of here, he said. You call yourself a dancer? Get out of my sight. And off she went. And she left the banqueting hall. She went through that stone archway with the two elephants where their trunks were almost touching. She went down through the palace grounds, past the peacocks, past the orchards. There to the guard with the big barrel belly, with the never-ending moustache. And he says, is it true? She says, yeah. He says, you're going? Lakubandri says, yeah. Well, he said, it's been fun. You certainly livened up the place. And bad luck, oh, I suppose. He nudged his friend sadly. You see what I did there? And the gates were closed behind her. And look, Kobandri, well, she left the luxury of the palace. She left the patronage of the king. But you know what? Was she sad? Of course she wasn't. Because her mistress now had a seven-story mansion. Her mistress had clothes and food to last her a lifetime. Her mistress had disposable income. She knew they'd be happy together. And off she went. Lakubandi, my goodness me. She was a clever one. She was a wise one. She outwitted the king himself.